Hello everyone, I'm Susan Young and I'm here to talk to you about DAISY, the Diagnostic Autism Spectrum Interview, which is free to download from my website, which is noted along here at the bottom of the slide. These are my disclosure slides. And what is DAISY, you might be wondering? Well, DAISY is a semi-structured pre-assessment tool plus a clinical interview available in multiple languages to support healthcare practitioners to assess and diagnose DSM-5 autism spectrum disorder in children, young people and adults. It sets out a series of questions and prompts to guide clinical judgment about the presence of core domains of uh, difficulties in social communication and interaction, and the second domain of restricted repetitive patterns of behavior, interests or activities. And the best news is, as I said, it is free of charge. So who do we interview? Well, usually a family member, parent, parent or carer who's known the person well for a considerable time, at least since they were toddlers. A child can also participate in the interview if you feel that's appropriate. And you also undertake an observational assessment of that child. And I'll talk to you a bit about that shortly. For adults, you would interview them directly. Uh, but informants are also very useful to have, but, uh, provided they are familiar with the person's functioning in different settings. Irrespective, you should always attempt to, uh, get, uh, to obtain independent information. And what I mean by that are reports from school, educational psychology reports, speech and language therapy reports, or, um, or mental health or, or health reports from children's services. So how is DAISY organised? Well, it's organised under five sections. The first guides you to record background information. The second section is where you assess symptoms across the two key domains of social communication and interaction and restricted repetitive patterns of behaviour, interests and activities. The third section is all about comorbidity and differential diagnosis. The fourth section is the observational section, which is constructed by three by four tasks. And the fifth section, you will score and diagnose the, uh, the, 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 the uh, interview. So to look first at the background information, this can you here you record demographic information, you record their initial pre presentation and what the, the presenting problem is. You record early development uh, development and interventions, things like risk factors at birth, whether they met their milestones and whether they've lost any skills that they previously had. You might record that, well, you do record their educational and occupational history, medical history, um, information about family and relationships, including diagnosis of neurodevelopmental conditions or specific learning disabilities. With respect to the symptom ratings, these are organised by, uh, uh, by criterion. But the first criterion about social communication and social interaction, this is organised by under three symptoms uh, consisting of nine items. These cover topics such as social approach, initiation and response to others, uh, engagement in two-way conversations, sharing, uh, interests, emotions and effect, integrating verbal and non-verbal communication, considering facial expressions and body language, forming and maintaining friendships and sharing in imaginative play and adjusting behaviour according to social context. The second criterion, restrictive repetitive patterns of behaviour, interests or activities, consists of four symptoms um, and 11 items. Uh, these are on topics of stereo or repetitive motor movements, objects and speech, insistence of sameness and inflexible adherence to routines, ritualised patterns of verbal or non-verbal behaviour, preoccupations or attachments to unusual objects, restricted or perseverative interests, unusual response to pain or changes in temperature, sound, textures, tastes or smell, lights or movement. So DAISY prompts the assessor to consider key things as they go through these items. The first is onset. 
Typically, this is at, in toddlerhood by the age of 24 months, but sometimes earlier if developmental delays are severe or later if the symptom presentation is more subtle. Sometimes a child could have a, a gradual or rapid loss of skills um, between the age of one and two, which may be transient. You um, are guided to consider persistence over time. It may persist, but change in nature or character. Pervasiveness, they have to appear in more than one context. Whether the, the child differs from peers of sim, a similar age. Whether these problems cause them impairment in their, in their, in their functioning and whether there is camouflaging or masking by the family due to accommodations that are made, perhaps to minimize disruption to activities um, and or the application of strategies to help them cope better. So here's an example, this is what it looks like. This is the first item in Criterion 1, which is about abnormal social approach. So you'll see on the left, there's several prompts or questions that might be asked um, and you, you, you know, th these are to assist the, the de de your decision and rating. It's not, not necessary at all to ask every single question. You just go through till you've got enough to make your decision. They follow various tech boxes, text boxes to record notes. These are about difficulties perhaps at home and outside of home. The presentation as a toddler or what other people said about them current concerns and impairments, and how these problems impact on their daily activities. And here you would consider, for example, whether masking or camouflaging is, is occurring. Then you record whether this symptom is absent, partially present but without impairment, partially present with impairment or present. So for example, here is, uh, uh, here is the abnormal social approach uh, list of questions. And actually you can see the kind of type of questions. I actually find this one here very helpful. As a toddler or a child, how did the client behave? If you were in a waiting room at the doctor's or a dentist, what would they do if other children were there? What would they do if a, a child walked up to them and tried to engage them? What happened if they, child tried to share a toy? What happened, uh, you know, uh, how would they engage with that child? What would they do? So I find these very useful questions. Next section is comorbidity and differential diagnosis. And this is all about to help guide you to consider what might be the uh, an alternative explanation for the problems. What's the differential diagnosis or what is the comorbid diagnosis? So it's a clinical prompt. It's not a diagnostic interview for comorbidity, but it's to uh, encourage you to consider whether ASD is the primary diagnosis or whether something else is primary or whether the something else is secondary and uh, it's a comorbid condition. Now, importantly, the assessor doesn't disclose the condition being discussed, but leads with general questions that relate to the condition before focusing on specific symptoms. And as you can see here, there's a whole list of various comorbid potential problems um, that you will be considering. This is what it looks like on the sheet. And you would record whether it's been here, whether it's been uh, previously diagnosed, in which case you just know, you just say yes or uh, no, or whether you suspect that something might be present, then you might tick here whether further investigation is required. You know, in reality, I don't go through every single one, but in reality, I sort of flip through and ask about things that may have come up in the course of my assessment. Things that may be of potential um, importance. The next section is the observational record. Now, this is a, where you will make an, a qualitative record of what you have observed. It's organised under four key tasks. The first is a communication task where you record the level of difficulty for interaction and conversational style. The second is an emotions task where you start a discussion like, tell me about a time when you felt happy, sad, angry, sorry, etc., And you record their level of insight into the emotion that they are describing. Next, 
the there is a picture task where you record their level of understanding of a setting and social groupings and social perspective taking. This is actually organised about a birthday party and you will prompt them to think about what other people may be thinking or feeling. The fourth is a story task where you make up, where you ask them to make up a story using five items, an apple, a triangle, a tree, a cat and a question mark. And again, you record the level of creativity and imagination that's used in making up that story. There's guidance throughout in, in DAISY about how you do this and what you do and, 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 and how you would determine your ratings. Finally, uh, the fifth uh, um, uh, is, isn't really a task, but it's a, a place where you can record their general presentation. And this is things like if you've noted any mannerisms, their response to sensory stimuli, any compulsions or ritualized behaviors, excessive interest, or if you've noticed any self injurious behavior, anything else really that you've noticed that you think you, you should make a note of and record. So here is an example, though, of the um, observational record four of the story task. This is where you ask them to make up a story. You show these items and say, can you make up a story including these items? You don't tell them what they are. You just see what they do with them. So this is the final section, score and diagnose. And uh, this is what it looks like. And it's organized under criterion one. There are three symptoms consisting of nine items. The first thing you will do is transpose the ratings or the decisions that you've made about whether each item is absent, partially present without impairment, partially present with impairment or present into each of these boxes. So you will complete that first. Then you have to decide whether this symptom is present. And for the symptom to be present, at least one of these items have to be rated as partially present with impairment or present. So if one of these sh slightly shady boxes uh, is endorsed, then you put a yes here. You do the same with the following two symptoms. Again, one of the items has to be uh, present for the symptom to be endorsed. Uh, finally, to consider whether the criterion one is endorsed as a whole, all three of these symptoms or all three of these categories have to be endorsed with a yes. They have to be present as well across multiple settings and contexts. And you have to decide whether they are not better accounted for by a general developmental delay. Similarly, for criterion two, this is organized under four symptoms consisting of 11 items. So you will transpose your uh, decisions into the boxes. Then at least one of each of these categories or symptoms have to be endorsed to say, yes, this symptom is present. Then you move down to the end and you decide to decide whether criterion two is endorsed at least two of these four symptoms must be endorsed. You have to decide whether they're present across multiple settings and contexts, and are they not better accounted for by general developmental delays? So if you've got yeses to all of these in criterion one and criterion two, then you can say yes, all three categories of criterion one are endorsed, and yes, all at least two categories of criterion two are endorsed. Obviously both across multiple settings and not better accounted for by general developmental delays. And you have a prompt to consider whether the symptoms are, were present since early childhood, in other words, in toddlerhood when they're very young. And finally, do these symptoms cause clinically significant impairment in social, occupational or other important areas of function? Now, if you've got a yes for all of these, uh, all, all of the, uh, these categories, then yes, autism spectrum disorder can be diagnosed. If you have a yes for A, C and D, in other words, not criterion two, but for everything else, then you can diagnose social communication disorder. 
There follow some additional notes here relating to intellectual and language impairment. So you can make a note as to whether they are also present or not. And finally, the DSM uh, consideration of level of severity. And this is defined by the level of support that an individual may require. So thank you for listening. I haven't taken you through the pre-assessment tools. They are there, they're available online. This is my uh, website psychology-services.uk.com. You can download DAISY and the pre-assessment tools from there in English. Um, some of the other language translations are starting to come in. Some are already there. So maybe uh, uh, you, your language will be on there already or it's coming. If anybody wants to inquire, if anyone's interested in helping to translate DAISY, please let us know. Um, you can contact me via the Contact Us uh, 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 page of my website. Thank you very much for listening and I hope that you uh, enjoy and use Daisy and you find it very helpful.